Welcome back, I'm Pastor Cat. The Bible has so much encouragement. This is your weekly dose. Today we are in Mark chapter nine. And what I find interesting about this passage, last week we specifically spoke of Lazarus being raised from the dead and what that meant for Christ and his ministry and how blessings and struggles, they come together. Well, today Christ's actually gonna talk about his own resurrection to come. And we're gonna see how the disciples react to it. I don't know about you, but when it comes to me, when I get strange news, something I can't understand, or maybe even something that scares me a little bit, uh, I roll around with it in my head for weeks and weeks trying to figure it out and I'm sure the disciples were in the same boat. So we're gonna go ahead and look at it starting in Mark chapter 9 starting right around verse 2. We'll put it over here so you can see it. It says six days later Jesus took with him Pete and James and John and brought them up on a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them. His garments became radiant and exceedingly white as no longer on earth could whiten them. Elijah appeared to them among with Moses and they were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good for us to be right here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he didn't know what to answer, for they became terrified. Then the cloud formed, overshadowed them, and a voice came from out of the cloud, this is my beloved son, listen to him. All at once, they looked around, they saw no one with them, except Jesus alone. Now I'm gonna pause the passage for just a second because that is an amazing scene, right? They go up, this is called the transfiguration. Christ shows his godness to them a little bit to convince them one more time that even though things are about to get dark in his life, that he is the son of God and he is someone they can trust. Now they're blown away by this and then suddenly there is Elijah and there is Moses and they realize exactly what's happening, kind of. And so they say, let's put up tabernacles, let's stay here, let's start a whole new thing. It's gonna be a commune, commune? A commune. It's gonna be a commune of all of the early church fathers or the Jewish fathers at this point. And if Christ says, no, that's not gonna work, a cloud drops down and boom, everybody's gone except Jesus. And now they're confused again. Let's get back to the passage. Verse nine says, as they were coming down from this mountain, he gave them orders not to relate to anyone what they'd seen until the son of man rose from the dead. They seized upon that statement, discussing it with one another, what rising from the dead meant. You see, an entire worldview change is coming for these men, and they don't quite know how to grasp it. I've had worldview changes in my life, and I'm sure you've had them in yours. So what we do to grasp it is really a value. It shows a lot about your personality, how you wrestle with new truth, what it is given to you. That's the first thing I want to encourage you with, that we all have those struggles. And if the disciples were willing to express them and struggle with them, you should be too. The second thing I want to focus on is notice that Christ talks about his resurrection knowing full well that he's not yet been crucified. No matter what media today wants to tell you, this was not a political decision, something Christ got caught up in. It was the plan from the very beginning that he would be the perfect lamb, the lamb of God, with the blood that covers the sins of mankind. Me and you are included in that. I encourage you to look at that passage a little bit differently. This was all in God's plan. Christ knew it was coming. Even if he didn't want to take that cup, he knew it had to happen. Even though the disciples were right there, they didn't understand it completely. Just like you and I, don't always understand everything we read from the Word of God. Well, I hope this has been as encouraging to you as it has, it has been to me. I'm going to go enjoy the beautiful weather today. God bless. I'll see you next week.